Morning, y'all. Okay, so I was uh, wanted to go over something. It is Friday morning, and I was watching some videos last night, and I ran across Frosty 901's video, and he is a working locksmith up in uh, Tennessee, and he posted this video right here. I'm gonna link it right there, right here. He posted a video of uh, him picking a Pado lock. Now, this is already going to give away how to take it apart, but in the video he mentioned two things. But first, I will show you this picture right here. Let's see if we can do this cool like This picture right here. He had a cylinder out on the, on the table with a key. And I can instinctively recognize that key. So this is an MTS cylinder. This is a common replacement for the Pado and Papaz type locks. And while he picked it, I'm going to talk about it. I've had these sitting in a box ready to talk about for a while. And you can see, let's go ahead and pull out the three different ones. Now these are always on bar doors. So we had Papaz which was an oval cylinder. And then we had Pado and a bigger Pado, little Pado and big Pado. Now these are kind of like profile cylinders. And I say kind of like because they work the same way. However, there was a little bit of a difference. This is a lock body out of an original Papaz. And we can see with the papas they're sealed up. Uh, this one has some spring issues going on there. Um, this one does have clips that you can take apart, but on the Pado, as Frosty notated, there does not appear to be any clips in here, which there isn't. Along the top of his, it looks like, well, it looks like caps, like it's permanently capped up shut. However, there is a way to take them apart. Oh, and I will notate this before I forget about it. This divot right here, that is basically, instead of on a regular profile cylinder that had screw threads, basically on the Pados, they had a cap at the end of it. And when you tighten the screw down, just like a profile cylinder, it fell kind of into this chamber. So that's on all of them. And that's how it's held in. Um, on the Pados, and I'm kind of all over the place on this, but uh, we can see, let's see, I don't know if this is the small one or the big one, that's the small one. So this is the trim for it. And again, you will always find this on bar doors, older bar doors from like the 60s, 70s, 80s era. It is a Brazil, both of them I believe were Brazilian locks. The replacements, as he had out on his counter, is MTS. Flake just started carrying these. However, MTS International has always carried them. We've always ordered these. And it comes with the new lock body, the new face plates, the new handles, and your cylinder. Which the new cylinders look almost exactly like the Papa's oval cylinders and will actually go in however they do not work in the original papa so you have to replace the whole lock typically when you run up on one of these you have you say it's not working yeah it, it's not working right see how it doesn't throw it correctly and that is because it is just slightly different purportedly they could not make exactly the same due to some copyright laws but if you look at the cams here you can kind of see why it's a little bit wider on the original papas so it doesn't it and it's a little bit taller here too so this doesn't really throw the lock correctly so when you come up on one of the papas or a pedo and you're sitting there saying well it's oval and versus square that's no big deal once you take the plate off as you can see with the new plates here, it would traditionally, you're gonna have to re-drill bar door to make it work, but traditionally 
the centering is the same. They were very careful to do that. So this is the most important part, your hole, your handle hole and your cylinder hole. So when you have the pedo or the papaz, either one, you take this off, put this in its place, drill your you know, mounting holes and uh, slap it in and go. It does require a little bit of work to make fit, but it is, this is the handle for it. Very distinctive shaped handle. This is off of an old Pado one. It's held in with a set screw. Oh, sorry about dang interruptions. Okay, so to get back to the point, where did my screwdriver go? Ah, here it is. Okay, so to take these apart, it's not easy to do. It's, it's usually best to just replace, even though you have to replace the whole thing and do modification but they they can come apart am i zoomed in too much no, i'm not zoomed in um and sometimes it's easier you know easier on some some are easier some are not but basically what's going on why does it seem like i'm zoomed hold on okay anyway um basically it's easier said than done sometimes so what's going on is if you look really closely, what appears to be a cap is actually a pin. And what you're trying to do, this six, the very last chamber hole has a pin that drops down and secures the plug in. So that's why there's no clip because there's a pin that actually drops down in there. And the rest of them are just spring regular, you know, pin chamber tumbler, pin tumbler uh, with springs in there. So basically you would come in to the very back and get behind that last, get into the very back of it and I'm gonna stay quiet here for a minute and try to do this on camera, my camera frame. Yeah. Let's see how far that seems to be stuck in there. Okay, so I will oftentimes just wedge something under the back and start to, with a lever motion, I'm making a sucky video, aren't I, guys? Okay, I need to get off of this, uh, need to get off this counter, go over to a wood counter so that I can whack it. There we go. If you have a vice, you can clamp it up in a vice. There we go. Okay, so starting to come out. Yay! <laughs> Yay, 
now as soon as I get it past that one I want to kind of clear the chamber hole a little bit and grab my flashlight and look in there and I can see the pin so if you deform that chamber hole whoop, if you deform that chamber hole you may have trouble getting that pin to drop out but it doesn't really matter as long as you can get the rest of this out and once you have a good little you know good enough little piece sticking out there you can typically typically but not today of course not because it's going to be stubborn for the video uh, let's see, pair of pliers. Let's see if you can get a pair of pliers on it when it gets far enough out be that way I'm gonna come up to like chamber three or four here kind of push it out a little bit more go back you get the idea where I'm going with this pain in the butt Let's see if that's enough Still, nope. There we go. We got good, good mess up on there. <laughs> but again, I'm gonna just top load these anyway, so. Still, nope. go starting to come out okay let's move back over here since I got it going better lighting There we go. Focus, focus. All right. So once you get it out enough to clamp it on there and just start pulling it. Hopefully you haven't, ooh, hopefully you haven't deformed the pen too much while you were banging it. There we go. Oh, hello, little pen. So, 
there is our chamber cap pin and we can see that we have springs really icky matter what order you pull them out now I will take this moment to notate ugh, gross that I lost one so it's not a good idea to lose one because uh Because they're a special size. So regular pins won't fit in here like out of your pen and kit. Because they're too big. And master pin, master padlock pins actually will work. But not great. Okay. Let me, I'm going to move it over here real quick just to... Just to do that, because I don't want to do that on the glass. And uh, we have a empty core. I don't know if we'll be able to get that back pin out that holds it in. Sometimes, if you just whack it enough, the pin will drop enough for you to pull that core out, but it's pretty well in there. Pretty well stuck in there, I should say. And if it won't come out, there's really no way to make it come out so you would just have to top load your pins accordingly it's close though I'm gonna go bang it on the thing hold on okay I went and banged it on the vise to see if that would help and it still hasn't but we can look at the pins since that's probably what y'all are interested in. And we can see we have little bitty spool pins, all five chambers. I think that's a spool, yep. Once you get the goo off of each one. We see that they are all little bitty spools. And that is how you take one of those apart. So again, you can cut it. What I've done when I've had to make keys for them is I'll use master padlock pins. If you're lucky enough to get the core out, it's easier. But if you have to top load it, I will take master padlock pins and drop them in there 
and then code cut the key little by little until it works for each chamber. Very lengthy process, but sometimes you just can't help having to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, let's take a close look at these. All these nasty little pins. Yeah, and that is how you get a Pado open. So basically what I'm trying to say here <laughs> is even if you cut it in half, and this is just a frosty, but even if you cut it in half, you're still going to have to drive that pin out. So once you cut it in half, you're probably going to have to drill a hole in line with that pin to drive it out that way which would be considerably easier than having to do it through the top. But that is how you service Pado cylinders specifically. This one, this pin, I uh, tried getting it out, but it just would not come out. And that's gonna happen sometimes. So, um, and as you get done, just simply slide that back in, tap it down flush with the face, and you're all done. So anyway, that is how you do your Pado cylinders. Thanks for watching, guys. Ooh.